Hello, and welcome to Beyond Books, where we talk about books from Book of the Month Club and beyond. I'm your host, I'm Renee. Let's get started with a review of three banned books uh, that I read this month, April, and um, another one that I have started. So let's start with the first one that I read for the month, uh, and that was a book that many of you are familiar with. I know uh, a lot of the booktubers have read it. And that book is Heartstopper. You can see it up there. Sorry, it's a little bit small, but I took it out from the library. Um, and I had shown the cover a couple of other times on some of my other videos, so everybody's familiar with that. It's part of a series. Uh, I read book one, um, but there's like five books now, so. Um, and it's also been made uh, into a Netflix series as well. So um, it's a graphic novel. Uh, and in fact, uh, the author, Alice Osman, O-S-E-M-A-N, uh, not only wrote the book, but also did the graphics to it. And I thought the graphics were very good. I thought they were a bit of a step up from some of the other graphic novels that I have recently read. Um, so let's start with, uh, what I looked up as far as information, uh, about it being challenged or banned. And I usually use, uh, information from the American Library Association. Um, just feel like that's dependable and, um, it makes things pretty consistent. Now, not everything is on their lists because some of the bands could just be local bands and so it's not enough to get it onto their list although there may be some information on their website about that. Uh, it's quite a bit of information on the American Library Association website and it's ala.org. I think I've mentioned that before and I'll put a link below as well. And uh, so just as an aside, too, when I went on their website recently, I noticed that they've now compiled the top 10 for 2023. Uh, so that's new. And uh, it probably was just posted within the last few weeks because um, I'm on it a lot. And so I hadn't noticed it until recently. Um, so there are some new titles there now because there are some books that, you know, have been challenged and banned to the extent that they're starting to knock off the other top 10 from 2022. Uh, so there's some different books. So if you're looking for something different to read as part of the banned book project, you may take a look over there and you may find something that, you know, nobody else has read or um, reviewed recently. Okay, so um, again, in this particular case, Heartstopper is not on there. There were local challenges challenges to it, which I'll uh, talk about. Um, apparently, there were many challenges to it. And it seems that many of these challenges are in libraries. So not in schools, but in libraries themselves. Uh, I checked out the copy that I read, as I said, from my local library. Uh, and I did locate it in the young adult section. Uh, and that is the intended audience. So that's good. It seems to me that it was shelved appropriately. Uh, last month, I gave some information about how books are challenged and sometimes moved from the young adult to the adult section. Uh, it's good that they're not entirely banned and out of the library. However, they would be a little bit more difficult for the intended audience to find. Uh, so in my library, in this case, uh, it seems that the book was, as I say, shelved appropriately. But it's worth paying attention to that little fact um, if you do go into your library looking for these types of books. I noticed it with um, Gender Queer. Okay, so um, I am going to uh, put a link to that video where I talked about that uh, in the description box. So, okay, back to Heartstopper now. 
Well, first, what's it about? It's a very simple story. Uh, two boys, high school age, uh, they like each other. They're friends, and they get along well. Uh, they enjoy each other's company. They do not really enjoy the, um, and this is my term, romantic shenanigans uh, surrounding male and female relationships uh, that the other boys in their school uh, are involved in. So one knows he's gay. Uh, the other is questioning because he does begin to have some feelings for the other boy. There's a bit of tension, both within the boy who's questioning and with the other boy, because he's just not sure where, you know, that boy is coming from. Um, so when you think about it, it really sounds like every straight rom-com <laughs> ever made. <laughs> There's always that tension. Um, and it, it's, uh, you know, the thing of, He's not that into you. Don't let him think you're into him, but you really are. I mean, it's really just, it's just innocent fun. Um, and it's something that seems to me that it's kind of taken for granted in the straight world, uh, but not so much for others. My video that uh, I, I'm going to link also has a lot of information about suicide in the LGBTQ plus uh, youth population due to feelings of isolation and bullying. And you can see how not fitting in right off the bat could lead to things like that. So I'm also going to link a video of a library in Mississippi uh, where they had a meeting and it resulted in the book being removed from the shelf, this book, Heartstopper. Uh, some of the participants at the meeting where the book was challenged um, are interviewed in that video, uh, and I'll let them explain for themselves and speak for themselves as to what it was that they found inappropriate about this book. Um, for me, I see no reason for it to be banned and challenged, particularly from libraries. Um, it's been made into a series, as I said. Uh, it's on Netflix, and the books and the series are enormously popular. Uh, so, um, yeah, that's where we're at with that one. I'm not going to say much more about it. So, let's move on to Of Mice and Men by John Steinbeck. That is the second book, uh, Banned and Challenged that I read this month. It's a classic, right? People love this book. Uh, it achieved remarkable success as a novel, a Broadway play, and it was made into three acclaimed films. So when you read it, you do notice something a little bit different about it. And I'm not sure you're aware of this, but Of Mice and Men, is like an experimental form. It's written in an experimental form where Steinbeck described it as a kind of playable novel, written in a novel form, but so scened and set that it can be played as it stands. So it was almost a natural for a Broadway play. And you do notice that when you read it, it'll say like, you know, uh, there's a darkened room and a dog lays down you know, and the the light, you know, comes through the door and in comes, you know, these different people or something. It really, like, sets things as a scene such as that. So what is Of Mice and Men about? Well, it's about poor migrant workers during the Depression era. Uh, there's a developmentally delayed character who is a very large man physically, uh, and therefore... <laughs> he's a very wonderful worker on the farms, uh, but he's a bit of a handful to have around because he's very childlike uh, and he's there, you know, among men. Um, I'm not going to say really a whole lot more, um, and I really shouldn't need to with this book. 
you know, it's a classic and I'm sure most people, you know, have at least some awareness of the basic storyline. Uh, let's talk about why it's banned. Well, from the American Library Association website, the Reader's Digest version <laughs> or the short version of why it's banned is, is this. Banned and challenged for racial slurs and racist stereotypes and their negative effect on students. Uh, so according to the American Library Association in 2006, Of Mice and Men is the fourth most controversial book in the United States. The fourth most. Because there's racial slurs and race, racist stereotypes, there are a lot of racist characters throughout all of literature. I mean, it's kind of the, um, you know, challenges to them where, you know, people can see the two sides, racism and anti-racism. I mean, these aren't necessarily books that are promoting racism. There is a racist character. Um, we come across people like this all the time in our lives. So that makes it the fourth most banned and challenged book. That doesn't sound right to me. Um, it's been in the top 100 for the following decade uh, of 2010 to 2019. They do their top 100 by decades like that. Um, but then uh, it slips down to um, number 28. Not necessarily a good sign because, again, that just means other books are taking its place. So uh, it's controversial uh, in that it is one of the most challenged titles in schools and libraries now on this one. Uh, a book that many people want removed from pu public libraries. Of Mice and Men has been challenged largely because of the language used in the book. Well, there is some slang language, vulgar language, if you want to call it that. Um, it's good to be aware of that, but again, that's in a lot of books. Um, but also, now this is interesting, for a whole host of other perceived taboo issues. So what could those be? Promoting euthanasia. I don't want to say too much about that, but no, I, I don't think it was promoting euthanasia. Uh, and being anti-business among the more unusual reasons. Anti-business. Hmm. I'm going to leave that one there. Okay, so in every bit of honest writing in the world, there is a base theme. This is a quote now. So I'll tell you who the quote is from at the end. But here we go. In every bit of honest writing in the world, there is a base theme. Try to understand men. If you understand each other, you will be kind to each other. Knowing a man will never lead to hate and nearly always leads to love. There are shorter means, many of them. There is writing promoting social change, writing punishing injustice, writing in celebration of heroism, but always that base theme, try to understand each other. It's a good quote. Well, the person who said that is John Steinbeck himself. It's like he knew. Uh, and he said this uh, in his journal, his own personal journal, apparently, uh, in 1938. This was written in 1937. So there's that. I will also put a link to another interesting article um, that just brings out little interesting facts about Of Mice and Men. And it's pretty good. I think you'll like it. It's short. Okay, so I'm going to leave that there and move on to a newer novel, also banned, challenged, also that I read this month, April. Just finished it. 
Uh, this is Looking for Alaska. It is by John Green, and it is from 2005. It is a young adult novel. Uh, the author has had much success with his books. He's written several. Uh, and he is the author of a book that probably will sound familiar to you, The Fault in Our Stars. That's his work. Uh, it was enormously popular as a book and uh, as a movie. Um, and this, Looking for Alaska, is also a series, just like Heartstopper. Enormously popular, and it won several literary awards, etc. It is... Number five, tied with the infamous now, Perks of Being a Wallflower, <laughs> which happens to be the book that started this whole project. Um, and for 2023, it too has dropped off of the top 10. It was number five, tied for number five in 2022. But remember, again, not necessarily a positive thing, right? It just means they found a whole new batch of books to ban and challenge. So what is Looking for Alaska about? Let's talk about that for a second. It's about a group of friends in their junior year of high school. Uh, they're at a boarding school and they are part of kind of the fringe group, I'm going to say. Uh, they're not among the really popular or the really smart kids. Uh, they just kind of take care of each other. And they're actually friends. They aren't bound by, um, you know, I want to be with so-and-so because he's popular. I want to hang with such-and-such -such because he's the jock or whatever. No, these, these young people are really friends with each other. They're bonded in a way. Um, the book follows them throughout the school year and uh, events that they live through that cause them to question the meaning of life question themselves, and to learn to forgive both themselves and others. Um, it's a really beautiful book in many ways. It's got that kind of haunting and unforgettable quality that I really like. Uh, I think that the age group of a junior in high school is like the perfect age for this story because I truly from 50 years ago, <laughs> I remember grappling with these same types of issues uh, in my own junior year. Um, it's really, honestly, it's that much on point. So why is it banned? Well, again, here's the, here's the short version. Banned and challenged for LGBTQIA plus content. And because it was claimed to be sexually explicit. Okay. Well, there is one scene, I, I think just one, uh, that is sexual. Uh, they're juniors in high school. Uh, if a parent doesn't want their child to read that particular scene, then they shouldn't. Uh, but with so many other really poignant themes throughout the book, uh, it really would be a shame uh, for that student or that age group person to miss out on that story because of one scene. Um, now, let's talk about the LGBTQIA plus content. This is really interesting. I saw that and I read through the book. There is not a gay character, trans character, questioning character in the book. Where did they get that from? Well, it turns out that when this was made into a series, there is a teacher. He's, he's in the book. He's in, a key figure in a way. He's an older man. He teaches uh, religion and philosophy. And that religion and philosophy, his classes and what he's teaching, sort of like intersperse throughout the different things that happen to them. And, and it's like kind of like in the back, especially of the main character's 
mind, you know, this questioning the meaning of life and things like that. It's kind of in the back of his mind. So in a way, the character is the character of the older teacher is kind of a key character in that sense. But he really isn't developed in a personal way. You don't get to know much about him, except it does say that he's, you know, obviously older. He's in ill, Ill health and his wife has already passed away. Well, when they did the TV series, um, they changed it so that he actually had a male partner, not with him, but who had passed away of AIDS uh, back in the 80s. And so there's a scene where he's reminiscing about this man, and apparently they, um, I think, are dancing together or something like that, you know, and you learn that this partner of his uh, passed away from AIDS. Okay, well, <laughs> it's just something different that they put in there. You know, um, I think they just wanted to give the character a little bit more depth and, a, you know, a bit of a, a life outside of the classroom and, you know, his, his illness and things like that. So, um, but it's interesting. That's in the movie. That's in the series. It's not in the book. So are the people who are banning books, do they not understand the difference between a book and a movie? I, I don't know. I don't know. Anyway, these this group was a little strange to figure out what's going on and why. I think you can see that I'm struggling a bit with that. And I looked up quite a bit of information on it, but, you know, that's as far as I got. It's pretty vague. So, now, just one more thing. On the new list, the top 10 for 2023 on the American Library Association, uh, there is a couple of little buttons you can click on. Uh, it gives you the resume of the book. So, like the reasons it's banned and a little synopsis and things like that. So, there's quite a bit of good info there. Uh, and then there's also another button that you can hit and it apparently takes you to this area of the website where you can report any further bannings or challenges. So I found that kind of interesting and that was not on the 2022 list. So um, that's something interesting that they added and that, you know, as bookish people, we should probably be aware of. So um, I thought I'd mention that. Anyway, this has turned out to be a very long video, <laughs> and I didn't mean it to be that way. But, yeah, three books, and, you know, again, it's a bit of a struggle to figure out really why and give you meaningful information about that. But there, there you have it, and there's my opinion about it for what it's worth. So, if you do like my content, whether it's long or short, <laughs> Please subscribe, like, comment, ring the notification bell, give me that thumbs up. Um, I appreciate all of you so much. Thank you very much for watching. Take care and have a good evening.